crap hair is the equivalent of having like a turkey on your shoulder. You know what I mean? You're stuck with that all night and you're just sat there going, oh fuck, everyone who sees me has this fucking turkey on my shoulder. That's you, you, how you're thinking. It's not necessarily how it is. It's just how you're thinking. You're like, I can't talk to that last because I look like an Aegis or I can't, uh, you know, walk down the street because I look like a clanger. Crack it, crack it. Nick, knack, patty, whack. Crashing up the Audi, I'm a schizo when I spit on track. It's that shit that God was playing. In his fucking dreams, beg the boy to river dance. I'm Irish, what you fucking mean? In the humble beginning of Cut and Sew. It began just on the end of the shop here. Obviously, the main shop is just out here. He was out the back there and he was just taking one customer at a time. He was literally just doing it by himself. The whole idea of like a record shop with a barbers downstairs, I'd never really heard of it. I didn't really know what to expect. And when I went down the stairs, it was like, I remember that. It was, it was basic. It was wooden boxes where you'd sit down and stuff mirrors and that was pretty much it it was grim it was seriously grim i was there going like it was better when i literally said to him this was better when we were cutting my hair in your kitchen you know what i mean like what's this about but sean's optimistic he's bright-eyed and i think he just felt you know what if i stick to this it will get me somewhere but then he got involved with some other people who wanted to sell some clothes as well so it was gonna that's where the name cut and sew came cuts for haircuts and sew for clothes then out of nowhere, it was, the queue was up the stairs. That wouldn't have happened as organically as it did if it wasn't based in somewhere like a record shop. I think without this premises downstairs, I'd wonder where Sean's stance would be in Barbara. My work is shorty wilder now. My grandma loved my rap and she just so, so proud. Anyone who knows Sean knows like he's just, he was born with this like pleasant demeanor. Even if you were having the worst day of your life and he came up and asked you to do a shit in your chest, you'd probably let him, you know, like Sean was a total toy in terms of like style. He was like brutal, like he couldn't put two letters together, but he was really, really prolific. Like in graph, you have, you have your legal side and your illegal side. Most people try and put their efforts into both, but um, Sean's was just purely into the illegal side. <laughs> I think he's ambitious in whatever area he puts his mind to. Like with the graph, he was ambitious to take over the whole city with his tag and to make as much damage as possible. He put his mind to cut and sew and you've seen what happens. At the beginning of Sean's life, he was pulled back with all of the fines and everything from Graf. I think everyone tried to come together as best they could to help him. It's the bridges he built during that period that really has helped him with what he's doing now. Culturally, he's nailed every aspect of it in terms of Instagram. Like people, it's the easiest way to communicate what he does. A good photo of a good haircut speaks volumes. Like it's, it's better than any ad you can put on any paper. It's like, this is what we do. I spent about a year of my life contemplating wanting to go into the trade and it was people like Shawnee with his brand who inspired me along with other international barbers and their brands that made me want to take the time out of my life to focus in, in, onto the trade. Nowadays I get so many 16 year old barbers like saying oh, how did you do this and how did you do that and how did you become a barber and stuff like that and I honestly hold half of my success down to starting an Instagram page and pushing forward with myself. I didn't even know the half of it till I was working here and how kind of widespread it is because again a lot of other shops might be as in tune with a lot of aspects of barber, you know, either social media or barber and expos that, that are going on and stuff and that was like another world open to me when I came here. The shit we do on Instagram like when we're just being thick like putting on like a Justin Timberlake tune like having like a bop we were doing that Honestly, we were doing that on our Nokias back then, like just trying to like send a video to a bird on like, you know what I mean, and take three hours to load up. The photography, yeah, that's definitely one thing I've picked up. Like I never, never even owned a camera. I was striving to get the perfect photograph for my haircuts. So I went out and bought like a top of the range camera. I started bringing it out of work for just walking the streets and kind of picked up a hobby for photography as well. So that's another thing that just opened the door for me in that sense as well. So barbering can lead you to a lot of things. You can definitely get a vibe of 
what we do from our Instagram. I'd like to think so because we put up photos of stuff that happens on a day-to-day -day basis in the shop. So you'll see we're kind of messers, but you'll see we're also talented and good at what we do. Sean could have been a really good DJ, but you know, his passion obviously lies in his business and I think that's where his focus should always be. The brand's becoming so strong that he's getting interest from international other brands that make sense. I think it's just a natural progression because now with the internet, you know, people from other countries are looking at your stuff. <laughs> We all went over to Ibiza to uh, play some tunes and uh... <laughs> Sean really, uh, you know, starts a project with me as always. He has some sketches, he has an idea about what he wants to do. And then he bring them to me and then I'll bring my touch to it and we collaborate like that and we bounce the ideas back and forth until we we're both happy with what we've created. The top selling one is the Japanese creation that we did and we took the word uh, artists. Yeah, and then just played around with it and created some cool artwork. So you listen to mixtapes from Onre or Crystal Clear and then that would be kind of what my influence was. And then it was like disco and 80s and house. And that's kind of what happens in all the shops. Forbidden Fruit, getting to rock on stage, Shiny B playing. pins drop in a row or whatever, it really is the best feeling, like when you're playing to a great crowd and you've, you've honed it for the evening. Musically, he's always been on the ball, like it's always boiler rooms, it's always RBMA stuff. I have one on my forearm, it says Barbarian Dutch because there's a shop in Rotterdam that heavily inspired me when I was starting off, they're called the Shoreham, they're world renowned. For me, I that was my homage back to them kind of thing or whatever, and I have a cut shot, two cut shots. I'll probably actually still get scissors at some point kind of thing. I didn't want to overdo it with just barber related tattoos. I have all my barber tattoos now. I don't regret any of them. They're there forever. You wear it like a badge and all that shit, you know? So. Yeah. I feel like uh, definitely the barbershop culture in Europe is influencing what's going on here in the States and if anything, here in America they're almost like behind the times with uh, what's going on in, in the barbershop world. Tall City is a great place for anyone who wants to be a part of it. You know, if you want to be a part of this community, you're really taken in. This is the type of shop that was always looking to come and work in. It was like a family-based barbershop and everyone was very connected and that's why I wanted to be a part of Cutting, so I wanted to be a part of that family. I didn't think I was going to have one employee, let alone an army of barbers. And I did it, and I have tattoos, and I'm into art, and I'm into culture, and I'm into music. And by being maybe set up in Old City, that's how it introduced me to what it is today. A few years ago, I was sort of at a crossroads of whether I should leave Ireland and try to do something elsewhere, or try and do something in Ireland. Like, Ireland was very, it was recessionary, no one really had any money. My, my hand was almost sort of forced into staying anyway. You can go back to Cutting Sound in that regard, like that grew because word of mouth 
people knew Sean. People knew him from going to see his gigs. So they go, oh, I'll go get a haircut off him. But now you're going to see your barber DJ in festivals. His personality is the key to his success. Nothing else. Shawnee B is definitely tuned into something as far as the law of attraction goes as well. He seems to be able to like attract the right people to him to help him grow and build. He's not afraid to be different. He's not afraid to put himself out there to a fault at times. But I think you take that away from Shawnee and you lose the magic. Four shops in four years, like that says it all. Beneath the surface when you really get to know the man, there's a, there's a depth to him. And I think that people feel that often. And I think that that has flourished in his business. I just got back from LA, came to him and said, let's fucking make a documentary. And he was like, down. Not even a question was asked. It was like, okay, let's do it. It's not the traditional old school sense where you come in and sit on a bench and then it's just like next, next. It's, there's a community within it.